little tip. If you want your children to start praying, among the first things you've got to do is as soon as Salat arrives, make it a habit that you stop everything. You stop everything. Whatever you're doing, you're on your phone, you're reciting Quran, you're, whatever you're doing, make it a habit. doesn't matter if it's 8 out of 10 times, because sometimes you can't. Stop it in front of your children and let them see that the majority of the time you stop as soon as the Salat comes and you get up and make Salat. If you're a father and you go to the masjid or you pray at home or you're a mother or you're a brother or you're a sister, it doesn't matter who you are. And I say pray prayers in the, in the house if you've got children every now and then and invite your children to pray with you. They will know that prayer is very important. That's one of the tactics. Another thing you can do is words of dhikr. Whenever you leave your house, enter your car, um, come back home, go to sleep, wake up, make sure your dhikr is said out loud if your children are still small. Say it loudly and, and encourage them to say it with you, such as when you get in the car. Subhanalladhi sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu and your children continue. Mukrinin. Okay. Wa inna ila rabbina and they say lamun qalibun. Even if they say it wrong. When I first taught my little daughter, she was about two years old, she used to say bababliboom. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. That's beautiful. As they get older, you instill that. Why don't you make dua in the morning as you're taking them to school? Say, today we're going to make dua for special people. Who do you want to choose? So and so. Let's make dua. All these beautiful things, brothers and sisters, you're teaching them role modeling. Isn't that better than road rage? Isn't that better than far out, it's all your fault. I told you to wake up and it's because you didn't wear your clothes and your uniform on time. God, you make me sick. That's what parents do. I hear them all they're saying that. And they say, far out, you're always shouting at me every day. Get to school and we as teachers, we come and say, what's wrong, darling? What's going on? What's happened? It's a little kid, a uh, student. You okay? It's just my parents, you know, just had a fight with my brother and sister. Make the morning, wake up a bit earlier and make it a little bit more time for this. Um, Teaching them to say Bismillah before they eat. Everybody does that. If they continue to do that and teach their children, that's an ongoing legacy for you. Being involved in their interests and their activities. Ask, what are their activities? Don't put it down. Don't say, why are you wasting your time reading a fantasy book about a dragon that flies to planet Zorro? Sit down with her. Sit down with him, say, let's read it together and let's see what we're learning over here. Why don't you become a teacher? You see a little daughter or a little son looking on something to watch, cartoon thing. Sit with them and say, what's happening over here? And be a teacher for them as they watch it. It works. And you can guide them, inshallah. So be involved in their interests and watch how much connection you will have with them. So... Take that advantage to teach them morals, ethics, and so on. Righteous company. Take them with you to the mosque every now and then. Of course, if you know that they're going to run amok in, in the masjid and uh, you, know, you know your child's like that, maybe bring them in times when you know there's going to be less harm. And as they get older, inshallah, bring them to the masjid. Fathers, mothers, boys and girls. Even if it's outside of Salat, the idea is to bring them and let them see the environment and the people and what their, what their identity and community is. Try to visit people who have good character. Make some friends who you visit every now and then and take your children with them. Um, even if they don't want to go, try. It's really good. I remember when I was a child, I had righteous people come to our house. You know, I got used to the hijab from a very young age. I got used to men with beards all the time and and different clothings and Qur'an and always talking. I, I learned so much. I'll tell you a little story. You want to hear a little story? I was about six, five years old. My father told me. I was five years old. And my father, he had just started to get religious. So people used to come over and he would open up the topic of deen. And I would listen. Nobody would notice me there. This little skinny, tiny kid sitting there deep in the couch. And I would just be listening. And one day I hear my father saying, when you go to the toilet, you shouldn't talk. Like it's not good to talk in the toilet. Um, next day, little Bilal, five years old, goes to the toilet. 
And my father calls me and I didn't respond. <laughs> my mum calls me. So um, they didn't wait. I'm only five years old. Why isn't he responding? It's the first time it's ever happened. So they go to the neighbors. I'm not there. My father gets hysterical. My mother starts to raise her voice. You know, it's all within a few minutes. Little Bilal comes out. And I'm right in front of him. I'm coming out of the house. And he's like at the neighbors. He rushes to me and says, where were you? So I was in the bathroom. And he goes, why didn't you answer me? What's wrong? You scared me. I'm about to call the police. Where did you go? And I said, didn't you say yesterday that it's hard on to talk in the toilet? <laughs> of course, not haram, but it's just, that's what I understood as a child. Instead, wallahi, he carried me, started making round the, round the world twists with me. And he laughed and says, wallah, you're right. That is true. I did say that. Like, Allah, yirda'alak. May Allah make you righteous. I still remember it till today. But do you understand having righteous company, talking about it? Isn't that better than always talking about rubbish in front of our children? All they grow up and that's what they learn. So let us, insha'Allah, know that they are an amana and that they will benefit us after we die, insha'Allah ta'ala.